I will now uh, recognize the committee for five minutes uh, for questions. Uh, and I'll, I'll yield myself five minutes. Uh, uncertainty seems to be the word that I'm hearing here and we heard in the uh, former panel. Uncertainty uh, is a theme. Uh, uh, Ms. Schwartz, uh, the, um, could you just tell a little bit from your own experience about the impact uncertainty is having on uh, participation of uh, private capital in the mortgage finance? Well, uh, I'm relating it to servicing and, um, and the investment in a mortgage as a whole. You have to have care of how you process a loan in the servicing department and also through the foreclosure process. And the uncertainties abound in the length of time it takes to just foreclose on a loan and someone might have abandoned the house. Um, so we have overlapping government programs in that uh, Fannie, Freddie, FHA, and HAMP all really well-intentioned. I work well with all of them, but they have different processes and procedures to do likely the same type of things. It would really benefit from more uniformity and create less uncertainty on timelines and getting through the system. Great, thank you. And Mr. Farrell, you, uh, in your testimony, uh, you talk about uh, uncertainty over the future regulatory uh, environment and the, the many different uh, uh, mortgage uh, modification programs and delays in foreclosure have made it diff difficult for investors to uh, analyze cash flows. Could you elaborate a little bit about uh, the, fa the, uh, the administration is exploring the option of implementing national servicing standard with no real time frame uh, for a decision and the, uh, the, the avalanche of rules resulting from Dodd-Frank uh, still in the, the pipeline. So. Are you concerned about that the uh, that this will address uh, or really make much more uncertainty for about uh, about private capital coming into the market? I, I think that the microphone, the uncertainty of uh, regulatory capital charges on banks, uh, the changes that have uh, emerged out of uh, the coordination with other central banks, Basel III, et cetera, are are unquestionably creating an uncertainty of uh, commitment of capital to the market uh, in some respects and in some asset classes. Now, if we go back to 2008, during the middle of the crisis, virtually every mortgage security, which is unquestionably just a cash flow that needs to be analyzed by investors and compared to other allocations of other cash flows, all of the mortgages in the United States at that point of time were considered to go bad by investors. So in the assumptions that were being taken into the market for secondary mortgages as well as for primary mortgages was that there was going to be a much higher default rate than actually what has occurred, uh, the severity rates, the recovery rates, et cetera. Um, that uncertainty only bleeds over into the kind of dialogue that we've had about the servicing uh, standards that are going to emerge out of this, the continuation of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, we have to compete globally for this capital when we go out and we try to raise it to compete for other asset allocations. Uh, when we look at the uh, influence of cash flows on our earnings and our returns to our investors, who are primarily domestic investors, everyone from uh, individual investors through uh, institutional funds, we need to be able to clearly explain to them what we think the variance in those earnings are going to be. And the uncertainties of policy, uh, modification, tinkering with the cash flows, uh, all lead to us having to, to essentially take a discount and haircut those cash flows and therefore raise interest rates in effect in the private market. So my, my short answer is yes, that uncertainty is there. There is capital to do that, but it is exacting a higher toll in terms of the absolute rates that people need to pay for their mortgage. Uh, thank you, and then I'd like to move on to uh, uh, Dr. Holtz, uh, Aiken, uh, you also talk about the uncertainty and in, in, and the stress that uh, you talk about the stress this, uh, that uh, housing valuations have caused homeowners and restrict their spending. Uh, do you th do you think that there's uh, or do you, have you got po identified any policies that uh, is having a destabilizing effect on the housing valuations? Well, I think at this point, um, 
the, the sad reality is the best thing we can do is to let housing markets clear and prices will decline where they have to to get excess inventories uh, off the market and uh, at that point they will stabilize and uh, at, we will also hopefully uh, begin to create some jobs. You'll get um, uh, some closing of the gap between the underlying household formation and demographic demand for housing which is uh, probably double the housing starts we have right now and, and the actual uh, demand we see due to diminished wealth and, and low income. So I, I've thought for two years now, if not longer, about housing policies that might you know, speed this, and I've come to the reluctant conclusion that there are no magic bullets out there and that um, you, know, uh, you can't fool Mother Nature. We're going to just have to let this play out. Thank you. Uh, the uh, gentleman from Missouri is recognized for five minutes. 